when friends drop in, invite them to make friends with Valley Forge. You said it. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Yeah. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, serving up a flight that's ice cold and unfiltered, goes the Greg, Sour Scott, Dunkel Dan, and Alt Beer Alley. That's right. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Unfiltered Gentlemen. Thanks for joining. Thanks for drinking along with us. I am Greg, being joined, as always, by the amicable Keys Scott. Yes, I can unlock your amicable. And the code says BJ Alley. <laughs> I'm so mature. <laughs> oh, we're like a bunch of 12 year olds over mm-hmm. here, except that's uh, <laughs> insulting to 12 year olds. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks to our top listening city of last week, which, which officially was Thousand Oaks, California. But Ooh. we had such a diverse top 10. I, I pulled all top 10 cities. So starting off with Thousand Oaks, California, Hamburg, Germany, Guten Tag. Palma, Palma Valley. I don't know where that is. Uh, it's by uh, me. That's oh. literally like my neighbor. Oh, yeah. Cool. What's, What's up, Palma? Allie's neighbors? That's rad. Hey, yeah. yeah. Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, followed by L.A., California, Dover, Delaware, Gathersburg, Maryland. Uh, Going to screw this up. Hyderabad, India. Nailed it. Oh, What's got up? it. Kolkata, yeah. India. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Chennai, India, and Patna, India. A lot of you, India. You're Fuck on fire. Yeah. yeah. So cheers to our uh, Indian neighbors out there. That's super cool. That is so rad. Ooh, I'm like honored. Hey, IPA. It's right from India. That's there. right. They got the the India Pale Ale. The there well, say they were the inventors, but unfortunately, it was the asshole British that were the inventors <laughs> of the India Pale Ale. But they got the namesake. I love that you know that though. Because I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> yeah, so thanks thanks for joining. Thanks for drinking some India Pale Ales with us. Uh, let us know maybe what your favorite segment of the show is, what what you're uh, digging over there in all the various parts of India. Ooh, or, Don't forget. Or perhaps they want to read us a grocery list. Oh, we Ooh. do have a grocery perhaps. list. Slide into our DMs at the Love Unfiltered Gentleman. We'll mm-hmm. send you the grocery list. We need some hot accents mm-hmm. reading the grocery list. We are trying to collect accents, please. We are accents and say it in your own language. That'd be great. Ooh, accents and languages. Yes. That could be. That'd be yes. a new twist. I love it. Can't wait to find out what baloney is in other <laughs> languages. <laughs> Not baloney. <Bologna. Bologna>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so hit us up. Sign in the DMs. I'll send you the grocery list to read off, and you can send it back to us. That would be awesome. Or if you know how to call America, which I sure as hell don't from another <laughs> country, it's eight zero five five three eight beer two three three seven. You can leave a voicemail. Um, Don't forget to hashtag show us your beers when you're on the grams. Tag us in those beer photos and uh, rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, however you're getting Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you rate and subscribe to us. Helps the algorithms do their nerdy shit and uh, people find out all about us. We got a lot to get to today. A lot of crotch talk. We have some Super Bowl stuff to dig into. I will be conducting some extremely important beer science. And, of course, we will wrap things up with some booze news. But before we get anywhere, let's find out what Allie drink. Wow. Let's find out what (laughs) Allie is drinking over there because words are hard. Mm -hmm. Have a grievance. And so are hitting buttons. (laughs) (laughs) Grab your libations, pal. It's time for beer of the week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Having yourself a beer? I am indeed, yes. I am drinking Lee. It's a Keller beer. It is made or brewed by Solaris. They're in Marietta, California. They're like my current brewery crush. We, I think I kind of touched base a couple weeks ago. We went on like a little field trip there. and Yeah, you talked people, about your cool field trip over there. Yeah. There's, Meeting the brewers and the owners. Yes, they're such good people. Like they're really, really good people. So definitely just excited about this brewery right now. So I am drinking. Um, like I said, it's Leith. 
I'm so nervous about reading this. Okay, so it's an unfiltered. I got your back. <laughs> I'm gonna need you. Unfiltered German style Pilsner brewed with floor malted barley, saws spalt, and Harlow toe middle fruit. Did I do it? Close. Perfect. Ah. Perfect. So Did close. I add the end. Did I mess no, it no, up? No, no, you're good. It was, it was Holler Tow, but you Holler just said Holler Tow. Too. It, it was fine. You were so, so close. I don't. Even, I didn't even want to say anything. You were so, so close. <laughs> I practice. Nobody knows this, but well, except for Scott and Greg, but I practiced like mm, a thousand times, maybe a thousand and eight. Yeah, I'd say the over-under was like 950. Yeah, and I uh, yeah. apparently still fucked it up, but. I got 948. Uh, I missed a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that might be accurate. Yeah. It is um, 5.2 ABV, and I hate to say this, my my reviews are still a little bit shitty just because I haven't completely recovered my taste buds, but it is a very clear, well-made German Pilsner. I don't know, it's it's very light and crushable and very easy to drink. Um, I have nothing on the nose. I have nothing, (laughs) because... You know, Rona, but um, right. yeah, I don't know. It's a really great beer, and they're just kind of catching some hype right now, and I think it's awesome. I love like seeing Solaris Sunday is popping up on the gram, which I think is rad, and it's just good people, good beer that um, you know you love to support and you love to put your money towards. You know, yeah, absolutely. And Solaris uh, would love to maybe have a little that on the show, maybe have you guys on the show hit us up cheap plug right there yeah skylar and DMs. chad are the owners and the brewers and they're they wear all of the hats of the company i think their wives chime in and help out here and there but they definitely like they run the socials they make the beer they're pouring the beer they're mopping the floors they do everything like it's just nice amazing yeah really good people and um, I've just been crushing on their beers. This one is just a, it's very light in flavor, so I can't really pick up anything to give any sort of tasty notes or anything, but it's, it's good. I love it. I've been loving on their beers Dig lately. It. Yeah. You've been crushing hard. I can't wait to, to try them. Yeah. Hint, hint. Oh, <laughs> am I supposed to send you more beer <laughs> <Joking>. again? <laughs> Always supposed to send me beer. <laughs> um, very good. Well, we have a lot to get to, so let's dig right into a little bit of crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. It is indeed. Allie, tell us about uh, the super cool fundraiser you, you're getting involved with. Okay, so I stumbled upon this account on the gram. I honestly, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of just get in the rabbit hole and I don't even know how I crossed paths with it, with this company. Um, Because, you know, reading is super hard for me. I sent them <laughs> a message tonight and I was like, hey, can you send, can you tell me exactly how to pronounce your handle and I, unfortunately i probably sent it too late they sell weed they're in oregon oh. it's called i believe it's esta weed wait esta weeda oregon so it's e s t a w e e d a oregon and they're doing a fundraiser where they will send you like a a box and you collect like the pop tops you know um they call them pop tops but like the soda pop can talk yeah, the little beard. metal tab, aluminum tab. Yeah, yeah. So if you, because I apparently I think that those are like maybe heavier or more valuable or whatever when it comes to recycling. And so um, I stumbled a, across this like post on the gram and I just reached out and I was like, hey, like I drink a lot of beer. How can I help? <laughs> Understatement and, of the year. <laughs> <laughs> what can i do and they were like hey we'll send you a, a box and you just fill it up and i was like cool what are we working towards and they responded and said it's a nonprofit charity that provides access to food housing and medical care for children and their families so if you guys want to collect them and reach out to the company that would be rad or if you want to collect them and send them to greg or myself that would be rad like however we can just like collect these beer tops and yeah send them my way and when you do make sure you throw a couple beers in the box (laughs) and i will be sure to forward it all along greg wants beer connected to the pop tops (laughs) yes please i'll just take the naked pop tops that's fine or we can just send them to or reach out to esta weed esta weeda oregon i don't know just try to hook up these families i mean it's so simple like for us who we just drink beer 
you throw your shit in the recycling without even thinking about it. Like we could just pop that little top off and put it aside. And I think it's a pretty rad little situation that they have going on. So I received my box a day. Like I was like overwhelmed. I thought it was going to be like a huge, like, you know, 12 by 12 box or something. It's literally, it's probably like a five by five box. Like it's totally doable. Well, thanks to you posting it, the wife saw your post. And also reached out to them, and we got our box today as well. We've been collecting tabs for a week and a half or so now. Fuck yeah! Hell yeah! See? And so, I've been collecting for, like, about the same amount of time, and my box is, like, almost full. So, cheers to us. Absolutely. I just would like to encourage anybody to participate in this. They did message me and say that people had been reaching out already, like, through my post, which I'm just like, fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. That's rad. Like, I always feel like I just have this, like itty bitty little tiny platform but if i can even just like do a smidge amount of like good then fuck yeah let's do this yeah yeah if you can't find them or would have questions or hit up Allie and, and she knows all about it totally and, happy to like you forward you all the information and, mm-hmm. yeah i know the wife was asking you questions and where do i go and so uh now we have our box too yeah she she slid in my dms yeah. too <laughs> i like the sound of that mm-hmm, uh, me too. <laughs> very very nice very good thing <laughs> she here. came back for seconds the next day oh, damn. damn it I work harder <laughs> hey it really do be like that it, it do what else is going on over there Oh, okay. So then I just had one more little crotch talk situation I wanted to follow up because um, I just feel like like bitches be taking over the world right now and I fucking <laughs> love it. And I don't know if you uh-huh. have who runs this motherfucker queued up and ready to go. Wow. Not in the slightest. I don't, <sighs> I don't want that Beyonce lawyer coming after me. <laughs> oh, geez. It's true. Queen fucking yeah. B. All right. So last week you were talking about how women are taking over the numbers and becoming the bigger lushes of the... Yeah, in America, women are uh, now drinking more alcohol than men. Yep. And also, so it was the same day that I was like listening to us chat because I listened to us on our podcast because, you know, I like the sound of my own voice. Who does it? And um, I heard a news report that I wanted to touch base on that apparently not only are we the bigger lushes, but we are also also the uh, dog's best friend. Mm. Dogs prefer women. There's a recent oh. study that came out that said that dogs prefer women over men. So I just wanted to say like it was cool like having you guys around and, you know, thanks for your participation. <laughs> but I think we got it from here. We're only needed for uh, procreation now. <laughs> yeah, or pleasure, you know, <laughs> or pain. Or taking out the trash. <laughs> I take up trash in my house. Oh, sorry to hear that. But yeah, so I thought that was just like fun little facts and following up on last week's conversation. And yeah, well, I can tell you, uh, Marty the Brew Pup definitely loves cuddling with his mom much more than me. Yeah, yeah, and Doug definitely prefers me. Mm-hmm. And my husband was out of town over the weekend. You'll never guess where he was. Arizona. Hmm. <laughs> Yuma. Uh huh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and. D- Doug was like laying on his pillow and everything. Like he was just like, <laughs> now your I got, this. got pink eye. <laughs> it was so his funny. Name is I God, just, so. And I let him. I was like, that's perfect. That's perfect. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean, there's no question here who the dog favors. It's, it's the wife. So, yeah, same here. Yeah. I'm, I'm the protector. When he gets scared, then he comes over and like right. runs behind yes. me. Yes. But uh, if we're just talking like, hey, let's hang out, it's like, mm, fuck off, man. Not with you. Yeah, not with you. (laughs) My, I, yeah, I've always been the Snow White of the family with all the animals, the tortoises and the birds and all that shit. So, and the bees. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, last week, Pliny went on sale. Pliny the Younger had their big online only pre sale for the first time ever due to the Rona. Anybody try and get some Pliny last week? No, I didn't even realize it was like time. I, I feel like 2021 is going by kind of quick yeah Mm, well it was on thursday we talked about on the show so i had alarms set the wife had alarms set Uh, our friend nicole over at the booze league had her alarm set like somebody was gonna fucking get it how'd that work out for you (laughs) nobody fucking got it yeah not (laughs) not working out at all uh what were you guys hung over no we did our part it was thursday i was everyone was at work uh we we did our parts russian river i don't know what platform they used uh love you guys but Boy, was that a shit show. Mm. That could not have been handled any worse. The way it went down, this went down for everybody. Twitter was blowing up about how pissed they were. 
It was uh, you went and you added it to your cart, and it okay. wasn't just a four pack of Pliny the Younger. It was also no. It was like there was a large mix pack. It was it was a yeah. hundred dollars, and I thought it was like eight to twelve right. beers. I was gonna say you ended up having to spend a hundred dollars, but you yeah. didn't get to choose your beer other than the four Pliny the Youngers. Correct. And so you go, you click on it, you add it to cart, and you click check out, and it says like you're in line to check out, and it looks all good, and and fuck, we're on the way to pay. And then we sit on that load screen for a solid like seven minutes. And then it goes, it's been sold out. <sighs> and that's what we all experienced. And so I was on Twitter and like people were going crazy. Uh, I guess some people had added it to cart, gotten to the point of entering their credit card information. And then all of a sudden it like flashed and was like, sorry, we're sold out. <laughs> yeah. And they were furious. So uh, Russian River, you got to get your shit together. Also, how about you make a little more beer now? You got the new brewery, the new system. You can make so much more beer. I feel like they're doing it on purpose. Um, they're one thousand percent doing it on purpose. It's not hype beer if they can if it's just super right. accessible. Which is hilarious because their whole thing is like, hey, please don't sell it on the black market, and we're putting not for resale on the label. Which what is that going to do? I was going to say, yeah, uh, this we is don't make we it don't more. want it on the you know eBay and all that stuff. It's like if you don't want people reselling it, then make some more fucking beer. Yeah, you have the ability. So uh, I talked to a lot of people and they're kind of over it. So have you had Pliny the Younger yet? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. yeah, a few times. Oh, OK. You So you felt it was worth the stress of going through all that? I mean, it shouldn't have been stressful. It should have been you, you sign on at 11 a.m. You put it in your cart, you overpay for it and you get it in a couple of weeks. That's what it should have been. Yeah, that same that same situation happened to me when I tried to buy that Humble Sea. What was that sour? The Super Pops. Super Pops. So I did the same thing. I set my alarm. I was like logged in ahead of time. I had it in my cart and I was about ready to pay like fucking ridiculous amount of money. Like I think it was going to mm -hmm. break down to be like $10 a can, which yeah, is... You got to order more than one four pack to make it worth it. Yeah, but can you do that? Can you even manipulate that at that time? Because like I feel like it's such like a scatterbrains of like... Add to cart, huh? you, and then you got to check out as quickly as possible because you can't you can't combine. Humble C allows you to um, add other beers to your cart first. Like it, it, they always go on set eleven ten a.m. or twelve ten for the or something super like that. pops is like for yeah the, the ten minutes so you, after so you can the... get in there ten minutes before add everything you want to your cart and then like at twelve ten or eleven ten whatever it is boom super pops they do that oh, so okay. you can have all the other shit in your cart already. Oh, okay. Whatever. Let's pretend. Okay. Let's pretend I had other shit in my cart or not. I was checked out. I had my credit card locked and loaded. It was 11, 10 and like 33 seconds and it was sold out. Yeah. There's this hard to get to. Yeah. I don't know. And like to me, and it was one of those things where I was a little bit relieved because I'm like, you know what? Shame on you, girl. Don't be fucking paying that kind of money for, don't be paying $10 for a can of beer. I just don't think be falling on that hype train. I don't know. I just, <laughs> um, I I don't know. I just feel like that's too much money to be paying for beer. And um, yeah. what uh, what beer tastes that good? I think the most I've ever paid, and I think I've said this on the show, the most I've ever paid for one bottle or can or pint of beer was thirty five dollars for a bottle of double double DBA or whatever double the aged version of DBA double double DBA or double DBA whatever the fire. I don't even was. know what that is. Oh my god, it is so so good. Is it thirty dollars worth? It was pretty fucking good. I know so many people who <laughs> it's it's their favorite beer of all time. Okay, so who it's makes really this good. beer? Firestone. Oh oh. So you know DBA double barrel ale. Uh huh. They have double double barrel ale. Okay, but these are the larger bottles, right? Yeah, this is old school, and this was like you know five years after they discontinued the bombers so it was kind of rare and they brought it back for a throwback and it was like 35 bucks i was like okay you know what i miss this beer i'll do it and i was like okay i have one of those 35 bucks bro i don't know what year it is or anything i need to go figure it out but tiff um it's hoppy on the gram she gave me one because she said it's her favorite beer ever and it was it's a fire a stone i don't know if it's the exact one that you're loving on Mm. I'm gonna have to do some research yeah, have to figure, figure it out because I have it. Yeah, I have it waiting patiently for me. <laughs> well, speaking of Firestone beers, um, over the weekend, we you guys can actually see it by me. You see my my wine fridges like right over my shoulder. They're they're full of beer, mostly Firestone barrel aged beers. We were talking about how we have all this beer cellar, and I was like, 
I don't know what the fuck we have in there. Like I have a guess, but I found this app on uh on the the app store for my iPhone. It's called Beer Keller and it's basically like a library system for your cellared beers and you can scan them, enter it in, say how many you have and then you'll you'll know what you have in your inventory. So I was like, "Oh, cool. I'll pull everything out, see what we have." Cuz like some of the things we have 3 of. It's like you don't need to sell her 3 of them. We'll sell her one for a couple years, sell her another one for like a few more years to see how it ages. That's enough. We'll drink one now. So Sure enough, we had some beers that we didn't even know we were sitting on. We had three, I think it was like 2018 Sticky Monkeys, <laughs> had three like 2019 Velvet Merc. So we had a few of those we had three of. So we took all the thirds, put them down in the main fridge. Uh, we found a uh, Abyss uh, from Deschutes, 2017 Abyss, just sitting in there that were like, fuck, this sounds delicious. Let's drink that. That's been in there for a while. So this weekend became like the cellar clear out. Had the 2017 Abyss. We had a 2018 Sticky Monkey, paired it with some uh, cheesecake balls from our favorite bakery, Sweet Arlene. Oh, we had a, a Velvet Merkin. Oh, my. We were so hammered this weekend. It was <laughs> phenomenal. You and your wife are so cute. It's ridiculous. We're such alcoholics. Take Great. it down a notch. Hey, so all I heard out of all of that was <laughs> sometimes you forget about beer, too, right? But it's beer that I stashed away on purpose. I just forgot how many I had. <laughs> nope. No, Greg. You forget about beer, too. I wasn't aging that sweet pale ale or anything like that. <laughs> okay. Can I ask a stupid question? Ask away. What happens when you sell her beer? What changes about the characters of the beer? So especially in bigger, like barrel-aged stouts and that sort of thing, uh, barley wines, you'll they'll start to soften out even more. So you'll get even less... And some beers will go other directions, but in general, you get like less alcohol, a little more of the flavor. It just really kind of mellows it out. It just changes the profile a little bit because it, you know, sits there for five or 10 years. So it's and like less boozy. It can be. Sometimes it's more boozy. It really depends on the yeah. way the beer was made and all that stuff. But I just, I love to see what it does to different beers. It's just so much fun going like, I remember it like this. And then we have it five years later. It's like, holy shit, this is way different either than we remember or it's changed a lot. And so... Um, it's, it's just fun. It's like a little beer science for me. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I was trying to think if like, it would be different if you stored them at different temperatures or so you could do a side by side tasting, but I guess that wouldn't be the same. It's the whole aging process or whatever. Yeah. And you want to keep it under, I think it's like 58 degrees or something like that. Um, otherwise they don't last as long. Okay. Um, so anyways, a lot of fun, a lot of, uh, boozy beers. That's fun. You guys are super cute. I love it. Thanks. Thanks. I'm glad I found someone who's willing to be an alcoholic with me. <laughs> That's like fucking yeah. goals right there, dude. That's right. goals. <laughs> uh, speaking of boozy beer, Scott, what are you drinking over there? Well, what I'm drinking is Simtra from Knee Deep Brewing Company. That's a triple IPA, right? It is, yes. Nice. Uh, we had that back on Batch yeah, 224. Repeat, yeah. So if you guys want to hear all about it, head back a few episodes to 224. You know, unfilteredgerman.com, however you get us, and uh, you can hear all about it there. All right, very nice. Uh, a lot to get to still. Let's just keep on keeping on. Uh, haven't done this in a while. And uh, if you like it, tell us. If you don't like it, tell us nicely. Let's do a little tech talk. <laughs> Did you hear about the latest doohickey? It's time for a tech talk. So we all know I'm quite the, the nerd, and I read something just today that excited me as a nerd and an iPhone owner, user, and lover. Um, we all have iPhones here, right? Allie, you've got an iPhone? Absolutely. I text him Scott, blue, have, yo. Yes. That's right. You text him blue. Everyone texts him blue here, which yes. is very yes. important. Yes. In fact, I just I have one friend that just came over to the light, and we have this group text, <laughs> and all of a sudden his text showed up as blue. I was like, oh, congratulations. <laughs> it is like a coming to Jesus moment. You're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for waking up. It, it really is. But one of the, the annoying things about the iPhones, and I imagine the Samsungs do this too, um, is when you're wearing a mask and you try to unlock it with your face, it obviously doesn't unlock. You got to fucking type it in first world problems and uh, it takes forever. <laughs> Starting uh, on their next update, iOS 14.5 will be their, their next release. They're going to have this option that if you have a mask on, it will detect that you're wearing a mask. And if you have an Apple watch, if you're currently wearing your Apple watch and you have your code in, so it's unlocked, It'll unlock the phone for you. Oh. Hmm. So it'll detect the mask. And if you have the watch on, it'll then detect your watch and unlock. 
and I am stoked. How do they know that I'm like, okay, so what if I'm drunk in bed? <laughs> Just say, I mean, it never happens, but. <laughs> That's a rare situation. What if I'm asleep <laughs> in bed and I'm wearing my reaching. Apple watch and my husband tries to unlock my phone? So I don't know. Because like I'm going to be, he's going to be right next to me in bed. Sure. I, I don't know um, how sensitive it is. It's supposed to detect not just the inability to see your face, but actually the fact that you're wearing a mask. So theoretically, it should be able to see from... You so know, he could slap a mask well, on. <laughs> hopefully, it looks at your eyes to some extent. I mean, he could put the blankets over my face and just... I hate it. I hate all of it. <laughs> well, then good news for you. You don't have to enable it. That's true. Oh, so you have to click a button? To enable it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's up to you. It might default enable, but you could always disable it. It's, I mean, it's, it's totally fine. Deal. I don't have anything shady in my phone, but I just, you know. It's, know. Sounds like you do. You seem very concerned. <laughs> no, you. I'm all for it. <laughs> nope. No, but you. But you can, you can do the old school <laughs> thing and just punch in a passcode, right? Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's up to you. Yeah, you can turn off face altogether. But I mean, I guess if your husband really wanted to get at you and you're wearing your Apple Watch, he could like half cover your face with a blanket and point your phone at you and unlock like it. I and then literally buried myself alive. Can you edit all of this all shit the out? Oh, oh boy. Well, he doesn't listen anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't know. Palma Valley. They, I mean, that's fucking <laughs> that's him. Maybe that's him. That's that for sure him. him. That's where his phone mm. is registered. <laughs> he can put his my pillow right there. And it's the... fine. I don't have anything in my phone anyways. <laughs> can you edit the part uh, out that Doug was sleeping on his pillow? I'm actually more concerned about that than anything else because he will be super pissed if he knows that Doug's sleeping on his pillow. Where does he want to sleep? I don't have a pillow. The pillow is my dog's and sometimes I sleep on the dog's pillow. All right. Lots of betting to do. Let's move on. All right. So uh, <laughs> we'll download this on Thursday. Jesus. I know. <laughs> Coming to you Sundays. Um <laughs> So let us know what you guys think of this. Do you have things you have to hide from your husband or wife or whatever uh, if you're down with this whole mask unlock situation? All right. Lots of sports. Like beer flex. And yeah, he's got to hide his beer from his wife, not his phone. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk a little sports. And now the sports brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore chop or the one-two punch, it's time for sports. It is indeed. Uh, as we know, the Super Bowl is coming up in just a few days here. Kansas City, still the favorites by three and a half points. And I figured we could talk about one of my favorite things about the Super Bowl besides beer, and that is the prop bets. Uh, all the prop bets are silly things like what color the Gatorade will oh, be, right. all that stuff. Uh, so we run down 10 of the prop bets. The first one is the uh, first person to be thanked by the MVP. Uh, options include teammates, fans, or the city, God, family members, healthcare workers, the owner, the field itself. Uh, of course, there's a prop bet on who will be the MVP. Uh, there's a prop bet, like I said, on what will be the color of the Gatorade dumped on the winning coach. Over under height of the tallest player to score a touchdown. Right now, it's at 6.4 or 6.4 and a half inches. Uh, the over under weight of the heaviest player to score a touchdown. Right now, that's at 259.5. The over/under number of Super Bowl commercials that references uh, that reference first responders and healthcare workers. They're saying three is the over/under. Over/under on the length of time after kickoff before the first reference to the first responders, healthcare workers uh, in the stands. They're saying 180 seconds. Odds on the primary color of Jim Nance's tie <laughs> for the commentators. Uh, right now, blue is leading the way. And the odds on the primary color of Tony Romo's tie, the over-under time of the first Giselle reference, and they're saying right now it's the end of their first quarter, the over-under on Tony Romo saying, let me tell you, Jim. <laughs> uh, they're saying two. I'm taking the over on that one. Over-under number of plays Tony Romo correctly predicts in advance. Uh, they're saying two and a half. I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yeah, it's pretty close, yeah. Length of National Anthem by Eric Church and Jasmine Sullivan. They're saying 120.5 seconds. Uh, the odds that Eric Church wears sunglasses during the National Anthem. Length of America the Beautiful. First song that's performed by The Weeknd during the halftime show. Right now, looks like Starboy is leading, or Can't Feel My Face is leading the way. Mm. Uh, odds of uh, people who will perform, you know, like surprise guests with The Weeknd. 
you got Drake, Ariana Grande, The Future, or just just Future. The Future makes me sound old. Uh, Lana Del Rey. So wait, those are those are the predicted or predicted guests. Yeah, that's who you can bet on uh, potentially showing up to perform with the weekend. Oh, I guess if none okay. of them show up, then you just lose your money. Oh, okay. Somebody's got to put money on Miley Cyrus because that's the. Uh, she's not even in there. She was not on the list. Oh. Is she rumored to be there? She's the only one that I've heard that's supposed to be there. I didn't even um, know Eric Church was going to be there. And I like Eric Church. I think that's... Well, he's actually scheduled to be there, so... Yeah, I like him singing the national anthem. I I actually... I like that a lot. Nice. Yeah. So how do you get involved in this? This is kind of cute. I like this um, setup. Yeah. So, uh, it, of course, it's illegal in California to bet on sports. Oh, Okay. You could go to Vegas. You, other states are now starting to legalize gambling, sports gambling. But uh, for you and me, the easiest legal way to do it would be a quick little trip over to Vegas. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this and so there's an actual like form that you fill out that has everything that you just listed. Sure, you could go to you know MGM Grand, walk up to the sports book, and and put some money down on some prop bets. No way. Mm. Mm-hmm. I like this. That's it's a way to get people who aren't super into the game kind of into the game. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> right. Now you know why I'm winner. interested. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I always love those games, the the squares games where you just like pay like, you know, 10 bucks a square or whatever and your name and initials go in there and then... The pool? And it gets like the numbers. So you need like the first team to get whatever number at the end of the first quarter. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's fun. Cool. That's fun. I like yeah, those that's ones. Always fun too. Those ones are good for me because they're like a no brainer because I don't know. I don't know football very well. So. <laughs> so let me ask you, Allie. Yeah. What color will the Gatorade be that's dumped on the winning coach? Pink. Not an option. Red, what? clear, lime, purple, or blue. Oh, red, Sorry. clear, lime, purple. Oh, and orange. Or blue. Okay. Can I uh, have a follow up question? Sure. Without you breaking up with me. Not guaranteed. Who's playing in the Super Bowl? (laughs) (laughs) Chiefs and... Chiefs and... Dan's dick. My dick is going to win, I swear. (laughs) My money's on Dan's dick all day long. My bet's right. My bet's on Dan's dick, right? All day long, baby. All day long. I don't even care who Uh, it's going against. Never, (laughs) never bet against Dan's dick. No. Or his beard. Uh, right. It's the Chiefs and the Bucks, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, so Chiefs are red and yellow. Bucks are what? Black and red, right? Kind of brownish. Gatorade's gonna be red. Is that an option? Okay. Yeah, it is. Orange, red, clear, lime. Purple, Gatorade's blue. gonna be red. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Scott, what say you? I would go with red. Red safe. Uh, it's just I logic. The, yeah, I, I'm gonna mix things up. I'm just gonna go blue. Blue for me. Hmm. And then a little non-Super Bowl football news. The Rams and the Lions had quite the, uh, well, it's not an official trade, but they've agreed to trade. Rams will get rid of Jared Goff and a couple of picks in exchange for uh, Matt Stafford. No way. Did not see that coming. Wow, me either. Very interesting. (laughs) Wow. I am flabbergasted. I am too. The Rams seem to think that Matt Stafford is that missing piece, and I think they could have gone elsewhere. Same. Personally, I think he's a little better than Goff. Sure. The word on the street is they originally tried to get Rodgers, and Green Bay wouldn't agree with anything they offered. So, Oh, I wouldn't get rid of Rodgers, especially not for Goff. I mean, his contract is up, so that's a, the rumors are flying that he may go elsewhere, but I kind of think I kind of doubt it. But Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. But a very interesting trade. Didn't think was, the Rams yeah. were looking to get rid of him, so we'll see what happens. And uh, this should be a no surprise to anybody. This guy's taking the Magic Johnson route. Jason Witten retires again. Again? Again. again? <laughs> Second retirement. He's like yeah. the Brett Favre of, uh, I guess, oh, he's still in the NFL, yeah. So, Except we haven't seen any dick pics from Witten yet. So. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's the Gronk, too, to right? Isn't that the Gronk now? Gronk has retired once oh. and come back. Oh. But Witten was actually in the uh, booth, uh, like, commentating. Yeah, he retired, and became so, a... Garbage yeah. commentator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And went back to the field. He even said, he, they asked him about commentating. And he said, well, that sucked. <laughs> How many times do you have to retire before you become, the, is it the Magic Johnson or Michael Jordan? Well, I think they both retired twice, right? Oh, okay. I think Favre actually retired more than. Did you oh, three? I, oh, from okay, the, wait, actually. The Packers, so, the Jets. I, mean, I do I don't think have that's the, accurate. Yeah. Well, it was, it was the Packers, the Jets, and the and, uh, Minnesota. I don't remember if he retired from the Jets or not. 
I don't know, either retiring or threatening to retire. I think he's, <laughs> I think he's got the record on that. I think, yeah. I do think Favre actually has a record. But, you know, sports is definitely my strength. We're leaning on you, Allie, to, yeah. to give us the correct answer. Don't fuck answer. with me and my sports stats, okay, guys? Yeah. 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 W- with Dan not here, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Happy to carry it. I got this, guys. Just yeah, trust me. Yeah, hope your shoulders me. are okay. Trust me. Well, and this is something you will care, care about because you are a baseball fan. Uh, MLB has issued a proposal for next season, and they want it to be 154 games. Instead of 162? What's the difference? Yeah, big fucking deal. I was hoping for like 80. What the fuck is the difference? <laughs> what's what's 154 versus 162? Well, I'd, I'd say eight games. <laughs> Okay, thank you, jackass. But like, what's the purpose? <laughs> I'm going to punch you. <laughs> what's the purpose of that, though? They actually said that we get the same pay. But I've heard also that the, the players union rejected it. Oh, I haven't heard that they rejected it I, I didn't see why. I haven't, you know, gone into that and probably shouldn't have said anything. But I heard that they actually rejected it. I don't know why they would because they're saying we'll give you less games for the same pay. I know they had they hated something about the playoff proposal. Like they did not oh, want an expanded pa- okay. playoffs. Wait, which so I love an expanded playoffs. It's the best part of baseball. Correct. Who who's rejecting the one fifty four games? Players union. Oh, okay. Because why? Because because it's the players union. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'd like to work less for more money, for the same amount of money. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna start taking Fridays off. Yeah, it's literally what I've been trying to do my entire life. So. All right, that's interesting, but I'm I'm just I don't know. I just think it's strange that um they would even propose that number at 154 because it's just it's only eight games, like you said. Right, it doesn't make sense. No, not to me, but you know. So, anywho, I'm, I'm, we'll get some sort of update, I'm sure. Uh, and then breaking news, everybody: Brett Favre did retire <laughs> three times. How many times? Three times. Three I times. feel like okay. Oh, okay, okay. You're following up on the yeah. So that's is he he holds the record. I, I didn't look for records. I just want to know how many times mm. he retired. Okay. Um, but we could probably find that out at some point. Let's just say he has um, a record. Yeah. I yeah. recall Magic twice. Yeah. Jordan twice. Yeah. Is Jordan for t- for sure just twice? I feel like he retired three times. So he retired from basketball twice and baseball once. Okay. And we say retired from baseball. I mean, he probably <laughs> was carried out. Is a minor league career yeah i think tim Tim tebow had a bigger baseball career than jordan did (laughs) oh my god don't talk about tim tebow (laughs) our lord and savior tim tebow (laughs) okay so let's move on from that in the great words of our comrade dan that's sports (laughs) we have some very important beer science to conduct before we get to some booze news let's get on it from a bottle from a can why don't people understand my inebriation I am so excited for this. If you know me at all, you know I'm a huge Back to the Future nerd. And Casa Agria and Topa Topa, two of my favorite local breweries, got together. Not only did they do two collaborations, but they're Back to the Future themed. So first we have Casa Agria's The Way Back is Forward. It's a hazy West Coast IPA. 6.9% 6.9% has a 392 and untapped. They say, Great Scott! We blasted back from the past with our friends from Topa Topa and Ventura and split the IPA timeline, creating a junction point for the entire space time continuum. The way back is forward is our version of a hazy West Coast IPA featuring a Googleplex of Centennial, Enigma, Simcoe, and Strata Hops. That's right, we brewed a West Coast IPA out of hazy beer. We're trying this thing out before it's cool, or after before it's cool. So in front of me, I have the Casa Agria. The way back forward is, uh, the way back forward is hazy West Coast IPA. Way back is forward. I can't talk. Light nose, a little bit of tropical fruits going on. That is soft, like a hazy IPA, but it's bitter. And piney, like a West Coast, it's kind of weird to drink. You think you're going in for this soft, juicy IPA. It's very West Coast through and through. Some citrus notes. A lot of pine there. Next up, we have Topa Topa's version. This is The Way Forward is Back. Clear East Coast IPA. 6.9% also has a 398 on untapped. They say rules where we're going. 
We don't need rules. We hopped into Doc's DeLorean with our friend at Casa Agria in Oxnard and split the IPA timeline, creating a junction point for the entire space-time continuum. On the other hand, it could be just an amazing collaboration. The way forward is back is our presentation of a clear East Coast IPA featuring 1.21 giga hops per barrel of Talus, Yukonot, and El Dorado hops. Wait a minute. Topa, are you telling me you brewed an East Coast IPA out of clear beer? That's <laughs> right. Nobody calls us chicken. Maybe you think this is heavy or that there's a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull dropping out of all the haze. Maybe you're not ready for this yet, but your brewer buds at Topa Topa and Casa Agria are going to love it. And if you're as nerdy as me, you got all those references they just dropped. <laughs> 1.21 What the hell is <laughs> so this is Topa Topa's. It's a clear East Coast IPA. On the nose, it is tropical and fruity with a hint of citrus. And it drinks very much like an East Coast IPA. Not quite as pillowy soft, but very juicy, very tropical up front. Uh, it's crisp and clean like a West Coast, but flavors of an east coast and i have been waiting to do this since i got these about two weeks ago i have cuvéed them i've mixed them together oh so we now have a real science experiment here this is both of them mixed together you get a little more nose out of it with the combination a little more fruit up front a little tropical fruit and that's really fun because that just tastes like a really well done East Coast version of a hazy IPA. Oh. You get like the hazy. It's not super cloudy and chunky. It's just it's cl or you know not hazy. It's cloudy. You can kind of see it's a it's a cloudy combination there. It's really soft. You get the tropical fruit. The the bitterness of the West Coast kind of tames a little bit. I was really afraid to mix these together. I see people cuvain on the gram all the time. It scares the shit out of me because I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna ruin the beer. Uh, this. I think was better mixed together. That was going to be my question. Which one was your favorite version out of the three? Oh, I'm sorry. I will answer you. The cuvee was my favorite the one. The cuvee was your favorite. Cool. It was. Yes. Nice. So, uh, yeah, there it is. I can't wait to see what I do for the pictures because I love Back to the Future. But that was beer science, everybody. I love that they did that. That's a fun little reference. I've been seeing quite a few different Back to the Future references coming up on the gram. Is there some sort of anniversary coming up? or mm, No. Hmm. No. No? Um, we getting ready to get those hoverboards? Are those are the hoverboards <laughs> in production? We got the flux capacitors. What's happening here? 1.21! <laughs> <laughs> you know, 2015 is where they went in the future. Sh no shit. Yeah. 2015. We, we yeah, we're six years past the future. Dude, where's my hoverboard, yo? Right. Uh, well, they got the little stupid wheelie hoverboards. What? Yeah, those little hoverboards that the kids were riding, the little two-wheeler things. They float? No, they don't float. They just call them hoverboards. Right. That's not the same thing. No, 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 no. That's not I the know same it's thing. not the same thing. No, that's... No. You seriously just got my hopes up. Oh. I totally thought there was oh, legit wow. hoverboards. Sorry. Ooh. There's not. I, I never claimed to be a smart... Person. So what do they call them? They're called hoverboards. That's the alley does not accept that. Yeah, denied. <laughs> no, if it's not a hoverboard yeah. that it doesn't, if it doesn't hover, how is it a hoverboard? I didn't name it. I would have, <laughs> I would have given the the stamp of disapproval had mm -hmm. they asked me. Denied. I didn't even know that was. Yeah. Dang. All right. Good talk. Good talk. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, let us know. Are you, are you Kuvain? Are you ballsy enough to mix some beers together and see how it tastes? Let us know what you're doing. I, I know our friend uh, Pura Vida on the gram is all about the Kuvay. Oh, awesome. And, uh, Hi, Vanessa. Hey, Vanessa. Vanessa Kuvays. She's a Kuvay Does queen. She? Oh, fuck yeah. Are you serious? Oh. Oh, I she... don't know that I've... You, you, oh, yeah. You know, I have her and her friend. They're uh, Check the corner. Yes. They're always mixing together some tripping animals. Yeah. You're right. And that was a good cue to remind Vanessa that we love her. Accurate. Yep. Yep, yep, yeah. Yes, she's a do. she's a cuvee queen, and so is Pura Vida. I like to cuvee. I like to. I usually don't fuck around with my own beer, though. I'll usually do it when I'm like at a brewery <laughs> or sure, you know, tap a house sampler restaurant. Yeah, like so. I'll be like, 
I kind of find some beers and like if I try a couple samples, I'm like nothing really, really fits. Like nothing mm-hmm. really feels like it's anything that I want. So then I'll just kind of mix a couple of them like in the little taster sampler cups and right. and I'll order it that way. So, but I usually don't fuck with my own beer, but I, I'll do it. I need to be better at that. I need to be better at that because I always fear that I'm going to make it worse. But what if the beer sucks or if I'm not digging it, like what's the, what's the harm? Just fucking mix it together. Well, there's like sometimes like, so, you know, I love sours, but like sometimes they're a little bit too sour and then I try a blonde sure. and it's a little bit too like malty, you know what I mean? So right. then you just mix the two together and literally I can almost guarantee it's going to be the perfect combination. Like if one's just a little bit too much and the other one's a little lacking or whatever it is, mm-hmm. kind of always works out, but like I said, I don't do it with I don't do it on my dime. I don't do it on the <laughs> beers in my <laughs> in my refrigerator. <laughs> you know, what we need maybe we need our our friend Por Vita to uh, give us a little uh, how to segment on Ooh. how to properly cuvee or or Vanessa for that matter. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, how to? Come on, people, help us out. Yeah, we're we're rookies over here with the cuvee scene. Yeah, for sh- for real, that'd be good. Especially me. Um, all right, let's wrap things up with just a little bit of booze news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for Booze News. We've been talking about the Super Bowl today, and uh, Anheuser-Busch has cut all Budweiser Super Bowl ads. You will not see a commercial for Budweiser in the Super Bowl. What? Wait. (laughs) For the first time in decades. Wow. No Clydesdale horses, no frogs, no lily pads, nothing? Funny you should say Clydesdale horses. <laughs> Sam Adams has a commercial that they're going to air during the Super Bowl <laughs> where it's somebody releasing the Clydesdales off oh, of the, the wagon. Is this like a jab? It's a total jab. Oh. It's a jab at Budweiser. <laughs> so look out for that Whoa. one. Wait, why is Budweiser not doing this? Well, so there's still, Anheuser Bush is still running four minutes of spots, but it's not for Budweiser. There'll be like some seltzer and some other Bud brands that are going to be in the Super Bowl, but no Budweiser. Holy smoke. So they're going to be promoting their, do they, does Budweiser have seltzers? Yeah. Bud Light seltzers? Oh, they do? I never had them. I encourage you not to try it. I <laughs> never would. Yeah. I mean, not just because it's, you know, Bud Light, but also because of you and your track record with seltzers. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I can't fuck with seltzers. Seriously. Oh, we know. Light switch. <laughs> Light yeah. switch. Yes. You? Oh my gosh, you guys. It's so bad. <laughs> you might wake up in Antarctica or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's funny that I've developed that reputation that everybody knows now that I can't fuck with seltzers because, but I mean, it's oh, true. Oh, it's no secret anymore. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know what? I'm I'm a grown up. I can call a spade a spade. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I should not fuck with seltzers. Especially Bud well, Light. At least you can be grown up about it. Yeah. Yeah, not Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, Boulevard Brewing. I don't even know how much I want to get into this because, boy, is it a tangled story. But Boulevard Brewing is in some hot water over some sexual harassment charges. So I read the story. I'll, I'll give you a little summary. A few female employees, one in particular who was harassed multiple times, went to management over the situation, went to HR. No one did anything. And it got so bad, she actually went to the police. And then it became public because the police got involved. And boy, has it just been trickling down. Now uh, executives are are quitting and being fired. And the original founder has taken over, uh, you know, uh, everyday operations in an effort to get things back on track. It is a shit show over there. Employees are are threatening to quit and are quitting. And um, it is not good. I I could read the story. I, I run out of time. I don't think I will. You know what? I read that and I'm like, let the lawyers, you know, figure this one out because you're right. It's really kind of weird. Yeah, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things going on there. Yeah, a lot of things, a lot of tangling. It is a messy, messy yeah. story. Jeez. I've not, read multiple. Not good. Not yeah, good. R- read a lot of articles, and uh, I still don't quite know exactly what's happening. Right? Where is Boulevard? St. Louis? No, Kansas City. They're in Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas City. Okay. Home of the Chiefs. Oh yeah, <laughs> Super Bowls. Super Bowls. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, a substitute teacher was arrested for DWT. Driving white trash? Drunk while teaching? <laughs> Drunk while teaching. Oh. A su- <laughs> substitute I, teacher. I would have never known the difference. <laughs> a substitute teacher filling in at Blissfield <laughs> Middle School was arrested for being drunk while teaching last Thursday. <laughs> According to Blissfield Village Police Department, officers were monitoring a medical call by local firefighters for a male subject with an altered state of consciousness at the school. <laughs> 
They showed up to assist around 1.30 p.m. and determined that the substitute teacher, Benjamin Warner, was intoxicated. Warner was arrested for disorderly conduct and public intoxication and taken to Lanawi County Jail. He's been warned not to return to the school. Oh, my gosh. No shit. So I wonder, I mean, that has to be, that has to be just like somebody we all know and love likes to wake up drunk sometimes. I wonder, do you think he woke up drunk or do you think he like got his pregame on and like just enjoyed it too much? What do you think? I don't. I don't think it was all coffee in that coffee cup. <laughs> so you think that he was drinking alcohol like at, after he woke up in the morning? Yeah, because here's the thing. The call was at 1.30 p.m. Oh. You don't oh. wake up drunk and are still <laughs> okay, hammered at 1.30. All right. I'm trying, dude. I was trying to hook right. you up. But yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to, trying to help the guy out. I right, was no, trying you to like, you know, I don't know. Some people, some days are hard and, you know. Come on. This is a teacher. Come on. Right. Yeah. If you, if you came in at eight and you're a little rough, I could see that being like last night's drunk. Yes. But one one thirty, you're well into hangover territory. Oh, yeah. He had a good lunch. When you wake up drunk, like one thirty is like the f- <laughs> fuck you hour. Like you're just like, yeah, get the shit over. Yeah, with. I, he knew. <laughs> you he either doing. have to like go to sleep or like keep drinking because you're fucked either way. But you shouldn't teach. <laughs> but you shouldn't be teaching. <laughs> anybody have any drunk teachers? <laughs> I don't think I had any that I was aware of. But I was I was just in such like a weird little sheltered house that I like when I grew up like you know women didn't drink alcohol and I don't know it just wasn't I don't really I don't know if I'd ever be able to younger me would ever be able to recognize a drunk and now you know what I'm saying have you shown them yeah fuck you (laughs) hold my beer (laughs) yeah (laughs) beers yeah Scott you any drunk teachers uh teachers not that I'm aware of no hmm any drunk parents you know about? <laughs> oh, all the time. <laughs> Mine especially. Uh, no, no. My parents are like extremely religious, didn't drink. and Yeah, no no drunk teachers that I know of. Yeah, I don't think I knew of any drunk teachers. I, I think when I went to school, the alcohol wasn't created yet. So That's, yeah. yeah. That's probably it. Yeah, I think that's a pretty accurate. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Just... Di- well, my, oh, my teacher ate by a dinosaur this morning. Yeah, so. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. How did yeah. you get arrested for playing with little boys? Oh, but... that's I remember wow. that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Not for being drunk. Yep. It was on his uh, computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a teacher have some sort of situation with like the females, but no, I don't. Mm. He, yeah, he, he might have been partying with them, but I think it was after hours. I mean, it's not the same, right? It's, the same. Uh, oh, of course. That's okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> and even if you're not a teacher, they're still under 18. <laughs> Whatever. That's why I'm not a teacher anymore. Okay, you guys? That way you can party anymore? with little boys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. When you said little boys, so. it made it super creepy. So, no, I was just oh. It ruined <laughs> That's my what joke. made it creepy, huh? That's what. <laughs> well, when That's you put it part. that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we found the line. <laughs> That's the line. Apparently, that's the line. Yep. Found it. Yep, Perfect. you just crossed it. Great. I didn't even know I had a line. I, I'd say that means it's time to hit some music then. Good night, everybody. I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for joining. I thank you all for drinking along with us. Uh, make sure you find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com. Find us on the grams and the socials at The Unfiltered Gentleman. You can find Allie at Allie and Callie, A-L-L-Y dot I-N dot C-A-L-L-Y. You can email us. Unfilteredgentleman at gmail.com. And most importantly, you can leave us a drunk voicemail. Flex. 805 538 beer. It's 2337. And uh, hey, don't forget, we got that grocery list. We want everyone's hot voice slash accent slash other language. Flex. Yes. With yes. With that grocery list. So uh, slide into our DMs. I'll send it to you. I think that's everything. Hope everyone gets super hammered this weekend watching the Super Bowl because why would you watch it sober? <laughs> Monday should be a national holiday, hangover day. And uh, I think that's it. So I hope everyone stays very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.